In this short video, we're going to look at a second test we can use to check for absolute convergence called the root test. So as the name suggests, we're going to base this test on the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n. And if that a limit is a finite number which is not equal to 1, uh, we can use this root test. So the analysis for this or explanation for this test is similar to what we saw with the ratio test. So if uh, the limit value is less than 1, we're going to let r be l plus 1 over 2. So r is halfway between 1 and l. So r is still less than 1, but it's bigger than l. And so we'll let epsilon be r minus l. So from the definition of the limit, there's going to be a big positive integer m, such that whenever n is greater than or equal to m, the distance between our limit value and the value of the terms of our sequence is going to be smaller than epsilon. Well, remember epsilon we said is r minus l. So I could rewrite that inequality as a three-part inequality. And when l is less than 1, I'm interested in really the middle and right side here. I can add l to each side of that inequality and find out that the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n is less than r. Or if I raise each side to the power of n, that says the absolute value of a sub n is less than r. Now remember, r is between l and 1, so r is smaller than 1, which means that if I look at the series uh, where the terms are r to the power of n, that's going to be convergent. And then I have this inequality, which means I can use the comparison test to show that this tail of the series is convergent, and that's all I need to show. If the tail is convergent, then the entire series will be convergent as well. And the analysis is almost exactly the same if L is greater than 1, but now we're going to have R greater than 1, and it's the greater than inequality that I'll be focused on here, which means that from that, I get the terms are greater than r to the n. And in this case, since l is greater than 1, r is also greater than 1. So now I have a divergent geometric series. And so this part, the tail of the series, is larger than a divergent series. So it is going to be divergent as well. So our root test has three parts. If the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n is a number l which is less than 1. And we know that the series from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n is absolutely convergent. On the other hand, if the limit value is greater than 1, then the series is divergent. And just like we saw with the root test, if the limit value is exactly 1, then we can't draw any conclusion. We're going to have to use some other different test to determine whether the series is convergent or divergent. So let's look at some examples. Uh, the root test is really nice to use when uh, your terms of the series are raised to the power of n. So here I have negative 2 to the power of n over n to the power of n. It would be challenging to use any of our other tests with this, but the root test uh, turns out to be pretty simple. I do need absolute values signs here because I have a negative 2 to the power of n. Uh, but the nth root of that then would just be 2 over n, and that goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So by the root test, we can say that the series is convergent. Here I have 
another series where the terms are n factorial to the power of n and then n raised to the power of 4n. So again, we'll use the root test. We take the nth root, then I'm just left with n factorial over n to the power of 4. And there might be a simpler way of showing this. Uh, certainly, uh, you get a feel for these things, and we know that the factorial grows faster than uh, n to the power of 4. So um, we certainly expect this to be divergent, but to show that it's divergent, we're just going to look for when n is large. Larger than 9 is going to be convenient. 9 is more than twice 4. And the idea is we say, well, uh, if I look at n factorial of n to the power of 4, well, n factorial is always going to have n factors or, the, or n plus 1, I guess, depends on how you count it. Um, and the n to the power of 4 is only going to have the product of 4 n's. So what I can do is regroup these. I can take my, I could just divide out this n. I realized that later it would have made it a little bit simpler, but for the moment, this is going to work. Let me just take essentially the eighth factor, multiply it times the first factor, the seventh factor times the second factor, the uh, sixth factor times the fourth, I mean the third, and the fourth times the fifth. Now, when I do that, these products here are all going to be bigger than 1, you know, when n is greater than 9. And so, uh, and then the tail is just going to be n minus 8 uh, factorial, right? And so, uh, when n is greater than 9, I come up with the n factorial over n to the power of 4 is greater than or equal to n minus 8 factorial. And of course, that's going to go to infinity as n goes to infinity. So this series is divergent by the root test. Well, the last one is pretty simple. I have n raised to the power of 2n, 1 plus n in parentheses raised to the power of 3n in the denominator. And those are the terms of my series. Is that series convergent? or is it divergent? Well, the root test is going to help us here. When I take the nth root of the terms, I just come up with n squared over 1 plus n to the power of 3. Uh, so now I've got a quadratic over a cubic polynomial, and I know that as n goes to infinity, that will go to 0. So again, this series is convergent by the root test.